Why do I want friends? Because now I'm, I have obligation to you. If we're friends, that means I got to listen to your problems. That means you're going to come to me and you're going to tell me all your problems. And I have to pretend like I care. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I am quite cold and lack empathy towards others. And I noticed it a few years back. I am analytical and critical. My personality type is an architect. I have been working on it, but I still find it hard to let new people get close to me and I keep them at arm's length. That hasn't stopped me from having a good relationship with friends, though. I have a good relationship with colleagues. Uh, however, I feel like something is missing. I still feel alone and no one is on the same page as me, but I'm not lonely. I'm completely fine being by myself. I enjoy my own company. Any advice on how to open up to people more, how to be more humble to make them make stronger connections, how to love someone, Lucas. Uh, so, dude, uh, I don't think you have a problem. <laughs> That's my opinion. My opinion My opinion is that there's a difference between being alone, aloneness, and loneliness. And loneliness is when you have an, a, have an opinion about it or have an emotion about it or have a hang-up about the fact that, you know, people aren't sucking on you and you're not sucking on them. That's what a lot of people, many people are oral, right? They, they, we have, they have this latent oral character structure to them where they really just, they call themselves extroverts, but really they just don't know themselves so, to such a degree that they need other people to hang on. They get their energy from other people, right? They need validation from other people. Um, and if they don't have that, it's like, it's like, pulling the leech off and then that leech is like still sucking right you like or baby like a baby sucking on the tit and you pull the baby off and it's like right and what happens it starts panicking well i don't have i don't have a tit to suck on and that's how a lot of people behave when it when it comes to uh being around other people and uh i i believe much of it is 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 very disordered because uh if you need other people to give you a sense of self then um, you're going to be dependent. And most people's relationships are dependent. They're dependent relationships, right? When, and that's, you know, and then when they don't have that, they feel lonely. They have a, they have a bad feeling about it. You, on the other hand, are okay being alone. Aloneness is being alone and being okay being alone, right? And you say you're completely fine being by yourself. You enjoy your own company, uh, and essentially you don't really have a problem, right? It hasn't stopped you from having good relationships, friends. I don't really think you have a problem. I think you've conceptualized the problem because other people, if you're around, an, if you're around a certain amount of people, if you're around people who are that way, you start to question yourself. Like, why aren't I that way? I've done that to myself before too. Like I, like I just didn't honor myself the way I am because I, I was around certain people that were a certain way. Right. Like, say, for example, when you're a kid, when you're a teenager and like everybody and maybe it happens to you guys who are adults, too. Maybe everybody's watching the same TV show. Right. Like everybody. When I was a kid, we didn't have cable. I didn't have cable in my house. and All the kids were watching um, Ren and Stimpy. Right. Remember Ren and Stimpy? And they would get together and they would talk about Ren and Stimpy cartoon. And I remember feeling so left out because I didn't have cable TV and they would laugh about it and they would get along with one another about it. And I couldn't join in on that conversation. So I would go home and I would be like upset. I would ask my parents, like, how could I, how can I have this so that I could get along and be with the, with the other people because I'm left out? Um, when the, fa when the ma fact of the matter is I wasn't missing out on anything. That shit is stupid. They're just, they're just, they're, they're connecting on something that, uh, that, some pleasure that they're all united on. And you don't have to be a part of it. You don't have to be a part of it. Just because you're around them and it kind of rubs off on you and maybe you don't, uh, you can't engage with them on their level doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you less humble. It doesn't make you uh, not a person that loves other people. It just means that you vibing on a totally different level, right? You vibing on a different level and you got to, you say, you know, you want to be able to appreciate people or whatnot. Um, I think you just need to appreciate yourself the way you are. You even took the personality test. You're analytical, you're critical, you're an archetype. You are, you do have a cold way about you. And that lack of empathy is actually a gift. When, when chaos strikes, when disorder 
ensues. When things are challenging, the cold, the cold analytical dude is the guy that you want to go to. There's a gift associated with that. Everybody else is freaking out because, you know, they get into their feelings. And it's that Dr. Spock dude that's that's detached, that can think rationally, that everybody turns to. Right. But of course, we live in this world where they uh, where they uh, celebrate emotionalism. Emotionalism is like a, is like a, one of our false religions. And if you're not if you're not feeling stuff, if you're not giddy about people, if you're not passionate, if you don't have uh, if, if you're not emotional, uh, they make you feel like there's maybe there's something wrong with you. Right. Because everybody's emotional. Right. And then they, they give us this lie as men and, and tell us that as men, we need to open more, open up more to your emotions and be, this is what they call it, vulnerable. Well, I think all that's a lie. I think all that is a trick. I think it's all about the, the disorientation of the genders. And that I think there's nothing more masculine than being cool like you are. You're cool, bro. You're not cold. You're cool. You're cool. You're unmoved. You're like a stoic. Right. That's your attitude. You thinking you're critical, you're logical. And when you're that way, you don't have time to be people get when you deal with people, you get wrapped up in their feelings. This is one of the things my father, my father is so funny. My father has no friends. My father is anti friend. <laughs> this is my dad. I have to give you some, some Edmund Hulse logic right here. He says, I don't want no friends. Don't be my friend. I don't want anybody to be my friend. If you try to be my friend, then we're going to have a problem. This is my, my dad's literal type of conversation we'll have. He does, not want, he does not want friends. And he says, why do I want friends? Because now I'm, I have obligation to you. If we're friends, that means I got to listen to your problems. That means you're going to come to me and you're going to tell me all your problems. And I have to pretend like I care. If, and my dad's like this too. Don't invite me over to your house. Don't invite me to your event. Don't invite me anywhere because then you're going to expect me to invite you somewhere. And maybe I don't want to invite you somewhere. What my dad is doing is basically poking the holes in the fact that people are fake friends. They're not real friends. It's all fake. And so he says, better, better that you just, and this is his attitude, don't like me. He doesn't want to be liked <laughs> and uh, and he's OK about that. I re I'm reading your uh, comment here, brother, and he says, uh, I think quite highly of myself, but I don't feel the same about others. And because of that, it's hard to care about them and not let them in more. But my question is, why do you need to care about them more? Why do you need to care about them more? That's what my dad is saying when he says, don't invite me anywhere. Don't be my friend because I'm not going to reciprocate because there's no reason for me to care about you. This is another one of the lies that the world has told us that we're supposed to care about everybody. I don't care about everybody. You don't need to care about everybody. You really don't. And when you say let them in, you know what? I think that it's better that you don't let a whole bunch of people in. It's better that you don't let a whole bunch of people in. Letting people in is what women do. That's why they have an opening in their body. They let you in. That's, a, that's another effeminate uh, trick that the world has tried to bestow upon men. We're supposed to let people in. No, you let people in that you want to let in, right? And, that's, and that sh should be very slim, according to Edmund, too. Very slim amount of people that you let in, right? And so... Maybe you want a wife, not all the women, but you very, because you're analytical and you're critical, you checking these women out little by little and you find one. Oh, okay, fine. I don't let anybody in. Mom will let her in just one, right? It's better that you don't let a whole lot of people in. Most of these people are emotional sluts, meaning they let everybody into their life, let everybody into their feeling, let everybody into their world, but not you, you got boundaries. I am not letting everybody in. Not everybody, first of all, not everybody deserves to be in. Why do you deserve to be in my world? Because you bought me a sandwich? Don't buy me anything. That's another one, right? From my dad. Why do you deserve to be in my in be in with me? I don't hate you. I don't have bad feelings towards you, 
I don't need to let you in. You don't need to let people in. But you can be very selective. And when it's time to let somebody in, when it's time, and when you find the right woman, and you know, depending on what your goals are in your life, because I'm talking about family. When it comes to letting people in, the people that you let in are the people that you put out, which are your children and your family, your wife. And I have I have convinced that when the time is right, you find that woman and you want to make her your wife, that you have no problem letting her in. Right? You're gonna melt because you did all the vetting. You decided it was right or not, and she's the one, and then you're going to be all right. Then who else do you need? Yep. He says, my opinion is that I don't want to care like you said, so I guess I just need to be myself and not try to change. Correct. <laughs> I haven't had a serious relationship yet because I feel like I can't find someone who I really like and I don't like most people, I guess I have high standards. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Keep your standards high. You're still a young man. Uh, it's okay that you haven't been in a relationship yet. When the time is right and when you put out, you, when you open yourself up in that way because you're ready, because you want to or you saw the right person, it's going to be like a hook, line, and sinker, bro. It's going to be easy for you. I think it's going to be easier for you because you haven't let yourself be trampled on emotionally by opening yourself up to a whole bunch of people. These people are traumatized. We were talking about trauma before. People today are so traumatized because they have too many relationships. They have too many friends. They have too many people that they let on the inside of them and they take on that spirit. Don't be taking on other people's spirits, man. Yeah, have high standards. Yep, have high standards. Keep those keep those standards high. And you know what? The type of guy that you are, the type of character that you are, I don't know what you do, but whatever kind of work you do, you're going to be successful and you're going to build a solid frame for yourself because you're analytical, you're critical. You're going to have all the you're going to set yourself up real nice and you're going to set you're going to create such a frame that when it's time to bring a woman into your life, you're going to have the pick of the litter, man. You're going to, you can, not only could you have high standards now, but your standards could get even higher then. And it's going to be great. Yeah. You're on the right track. That's my opinion. My opinion is you okay. You okay. It's better, it's better not to deal with people. <laughs> Keep them out. <laughs> That's that. You got it, brother. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.